Great. More white stuff. It is so crappy out. This isn't snow. This is like straight ice. Look at this. I'm gonna slide my ass straight down this driveway. The car's frozen. Gotta love the Northeast, boys. Wish me luck. Yeah, let's let's just put that back. We're clear. We got it. Oh, we linked it. Woo! <laughs> Not much speed on that one, but we linked it. All right, I'm gonna put the camera away before I die. Today, I was anticipating staying home. I actually had an appointment to go get my taxes all done and finished up. It got canceled because of the storm or the ice, whatever it is. It's not a lot, but it's just so icy. Like, I have to drive super slow. I'm already understeering, like, down this whole hill, but it is... Uh, I, I got told it was canceled about a half hour ago, so I figured I still have enough time left in the day to make a video. We might as well do something, because um, I probably won't be able to make a video in like two days, so I don't want to have like two missed videos in one week, you can't do that. But, um, so I think my welder came in, so I gotta rush down um, and get that, and then before the welding store closes, because probably, I need to probably pick up some wire and some uh, tips for the gun, we'll play with that today and see what else we can get done. But. I'm really pumped. I've been waiting for the welder for like a week now and I'm super excited for it. So hopefully make it to the store. But I'm gonna try and get to the shop as safe as possible. So I'll see you guys there. If my welder didn't come in, I'm literally gonna cry. It came in. Yes. All right, gonna run to the store, get welding gas, get some wire, and go. The guy that plows this place sucks. I mean, look at that. What is that one path gonna do? Success. I also got two new rolls of MIG wire and the tips that go with it. All right, done running around. Now it's time to open up the welder and see what we got. So the brand I went with is Everlast. Justin from Morpheus Performance, uh, he uses a Everlast TIG and I know he loves it. He has nothing but good things to say about it. And he's been using it for quite a long while with no hiccups. So I decided to try one of their MIG welders um, just for like general stuff around the garage. Uh, I read a lot of reviews on other people's YouTubes and it seems like a very good bang for the buck. So let's get it open. All right, so this is everything it comes with. It comes with the MIG welder itself, uh, the regulator for the gas, manual. We got the gun, the line for the gas, and a grounding clamp. This is the Everlast Power MIG 140E. I've, I've read a lot of reviews on it and it says for everything that I want to get done in the shop This should be more than enough uh, perfect for like body panels welding diffs welding control arms all the little stuff that I like to do All right, so the welder you could tell is kind of has like a it almost kind of has like a cheaper plastic feel to everything The hoses and lines are nice, but like the plastic stuff you can tell it's a little rigid things are a little thin but but of course they have to sacrifice some things to make up for the cost but realistically with this stuff as long as you take good care of it which i try to do i should have no issues i'm really just trying to get something that has that performs well so hopefully it holds up in that aspect as i lay down a few beads they're a little random you could tell it's been a long it's been a little while since i've played with mig if you want to learn more about the mig process uh justin for Morpheus, Morpheus Performance actually has a really good video going through it. I'll put the link in the description, check it out. I'm actually probably gonna go sit down and check it out, re-up on my knowledge on MIG and go from there. But I think I have my settings figured out enough that I can kind of start putting work on the S13 today. Now, um, I don't have enough metal to fill like the, the fix, the bigger stuff that I want to fix. So I have to take a trip to Logan Steel tomorrow, which will be cool. I always love going there, so we'll, we'll head out there tomorrow. But in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of, just give me something to do tonight throw on some music and just patch some of these holes. I mean, why the hell not? It's, I had the time, I'm not really doing anything right now. I'll clean up a little bit and then tomorrow we'll get it ready so we can fix the big stuff and then get this thing painted.
All right, guys, so I filled literally like 12 holes. If you could see all the way around, even this big one had no problem filling it. Did a little few in the strut tower. Not really gonna go on the side, you won't really see that. I'm pretty happy with that. Now what I'm gonna do is flapper this away. Hopefully I, I really tried to just like get the metal to sag deep. I tried to overheat it so it would just, the metal would actually fall. So it's just not on top of the surface. When I flapper it away, you know, it's a nice layer of metal underneath. So, so far, so good. This thing has been super consistent, um, really predictable, which is something my other machine lacks. So I'm loving this so far. Now, like I said, gonna flapper this away and try and get as nice of a shape as possible. So I've been going at this for quite a long time now. Everything's grinded down, nice and smooth for what I could tell. I still gotta handle this. I'm gonna do that when I get extra metal because I gotta cut a decent amount out to weld a new plate in. The strut tower is all good. The strut tower is hard because the strut tower is like layered. Um, the strut tower is like two or three layers of like really thin metal. So it wants to literally just blow through it so easily. But got rid of everything on the strut tower. It's all nice and smooth. I gotta sand it now with like some 80 grit. 120 and then set it with like the 200 What I also did was like Basically shaved the frame rail got all the holes out of the top of the frame rail the side you don't really see I filled like two on the side The frame rail is nice and flat now Besides the three mounting holes that I need right here and then this one for the brake line so I Even filled the little dimples you see these like little dimples. I don't know what the hell those are for They're spot welds or something, but I got rid of all of these holes now I have to tackle this side, and of course this one has a bunch of small holes too. So we're gonna go back to doing what we did here. Weld, grind, welds, everything, so. Did a lot of filling on this side, so literally all of this. I'm gonna leave these three right here for the power steering reservoir because I'm probably gonna use the factory one stock location. Filled all of these up right here, the whole tub, a lot of the tray, and of course the whole frame rail right there. There's a few little ones down here. This was a lot of filling, but the welding, the welder is holding up great, actually. I've been laying bead probably for an hour and a half straight. Takes a long time. You can't really rush the body panels. You have to be, you have to be patient and kind of let it cool down a little pass by little pass. And but it's working out. It's um, this welder has been super consistent. Hasn't hiccuped yet, which is sick. I mean, it's brand new, but still. So the camera just died <laughs> mid speech. And what I was gonna say was, what really really helps is after you finish filling the hole, is like lay a nice bead around the whole entire section that you just filled, and it really helps blend the piece when you try to flapper it all away. And make sure you don't just dig into the metal and thin it out. But as the camera was charging, I went a little OD and I kind of grinded down most of the holes that where I just showed like a second ago. So like everything's nice and smooth and even. Once I take some 80 grit and just blend it all together, it won't look like, cause like right now it looks like it's protruding just because you know, it's minimal sections, but it's pretty, it's very, very smooth with the section. Very, very stoked. These are fully gone now. I also decided to just fill these right here. I wasn't going to because I was still tempted to just replace this whole patch of metal, but I mean, I filled that. And that's gonna take a while to flap her away. And then this was like indented, so I just filled it so I don't have to, you know, use Bondo. I could just, you know, use metal. So I love the shaved frame rails. I think that's sick. But I'm gonna go back to flappering. You guys are probably sick of time lapses, so we're just gonna cut to that being done. I am, I am wiped the heck out. I've been doing this for probably like four or five hours. It doesn't seem like it because I'm cutting so much, but <sighs> it's all done. I'll probably end up finding a few more holes that I want to um, fill and grind later on, but for now, this is the bulk of it. 
Of course, I still need to do both buckets. That's gonna be the only thing in itself. Though I managed to somehow get this to like look even. Um, I had to do so much grinding and filling that there's just so many thin spots in it that I, like right here, it's so thin. Um, that I probably just might plate this. Yeah, I'll probably just plate this so I know it's good, know it's dirty, because there's, there, like, like right here is probably a quarter inch thick of steel. I tried to fill it to give it the shape back, and it worked. But like in the center, I just keep, I keep filling it, grinding it, and it just keeps going through. So it's not even worth it. Okay, I'm rambling, but welder, like I said so far, it's no hiccups. It's been treating me super, super well, and I, I keep living it out to the duty cycle. I mean, I was welding for a long, long time. I am like distraught from like doing so much welding and grinding. Very stoked about this. Look at all of that. That is insane. It's a lot of metal. Oh, what up? <laughs> hey, it's all vacuumed. I haven't seen it this clean in so long. I know, Don vacuumed it and took all the trash out. I actually lied, it's never been cleaned. It's true. I know, it's nice. It's, it's weird to see it this clean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, I want to show everyone what it looks like underneath your valve cover. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Don took his valve cover off and dropped it off at Logan Steel to get powder coated, and uh, <laughs> it. <laughs> Look at this, sludge boy. Look at that. Someone didn't like to do oil changes. <laughs> that is so funny. God. But you know what? Everyone says that the sludge motors are usually the healthiest when they come from overseas. So yeah, everyone's gonna make fun of you for saying that online. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But no, like I, know, I believe you. I know a I've lot of guys. Happen, but... I, I know a lot of guys who have had way better luck with sludgy ass motors from overseas than like the nice clean ones. But look at that. That is so funny. You have to like sea foam this bitch or something. This motor was definitely like daily by like a guy in his like mid forties or. Whatever going to work. He definitely did not own a tofu shop. <laughs> Alright, so now Don just needs a turbo elbow, downpipe, and a clutch. And we can get the SR in. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. When's payday, boy? That's, uh, every day. Payday's every day. I know this I know this seems like a lot of work, and it is, especially for a drift car, but you know what? When it comes to builds like this, especially where I have the time and the resources, stuff like this is really what kind of brings character to a build. It's just like the little stuff that you put time, effort, and skill into. I mean, realistically, like, bolt-on projects are fun. It's really easy to buy a bunch of nice parts or a bunch of just new parts and bolt them together. It's a very easy experience. It's very, it's very pleasurable, but it's nothing that someone else, it's nothing that the next guy can't do. The small, the small brackets, the small paint, the filler that really kind of like gives that extra character to a build and really makes it like it stick out, I guess. I don't know. Or I'm just an idiot who likes to waste his time, but whatever. Well, made great progress on my engine bay today, even though there is still a crap ton to do. I talked to Brian Hall about how exactly I'm gonna go ahead and fix this like little corner. If it was like in the center, I'd easy to just cut out, weld it in, but the fact that it's like a seam, I don't really know what to do. I'm not really that good of a body guy yet, but patch all the holes up, clean the frame rails up, why the heck not? Yada, yada, yada. But so far, the welder, love it. Um, Got to try and weld some thicker things. Take a trip to Logan Steel tomorrow and pick up some steel. Maybe make, a, maybe make something fun for the shop. We'll see. But, I mean, that's really it. I, uh, I wasn't really expecting to film today, so the fact that I was able to do this is awesome. So I figured you guys would rather see this than nothing. So besides that, that's it. But besides that, I mean, that's it. It was a good night. Um, I'll get more done tomorrow and yeah, okay. You guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content and I'll see you tomorrow.